Hi folks, hope you're keeping well. I've just met a, a guy on this trail. He just told me he's seen three deer in here this morning. So I've pulled up in this little lay-by just to keep my eyes and ears open for five minutes, see if I find any signs of life. Unusual to find deer in this part of this place. So it's lovely, lovely to hear. So what's today about? <sighs> Breathe. It's about getting some of this amazing autumn colour. Some of this stuff. Our clocks have just fell back an hour. And I don't know how this works, but for everybody else, they get an extra hour in bed, I think. But for me, it meant I had to be up an hour earlier. How does that work? Where's the fairness in that? I'm not going to think about it too much. Suffice to say, I was up early before dawn with the intention of coming out for dawn as usual but everywhere just looked so bright first thing so i thought you know what i'm just going to mix it up i knew the clouds were going to be rolling in as they are doing and i thought you know what i'm just going to wait for an hour or two and i have the clouds i've started to move in and everything's dumbed down and now the colors are starting to come out so i'm really quite motivated at the moment to try and get some of this beautiful beautiful color And I've come to the place that I visited not so long ago, which has got that very mysterious hill and the circle trackway running around it. It's a mixed oak woodland. It was planted around 1850 and very little else is known about it. And that makes me exceedingly curious to know more about it. And I've done some research and I've not found out anything concrete. But what I have done is piece together a few facts. There's a, lot, there's a lot of myths about this place that are often debunked. But there are certain things about this place that are physical. We can't dispute it. it it's right next to an ancient Roman road, circa 50 AD. It's very, very close to what was an ancient river, the River Idle. It's now known as Renneth Water or Rainworth Water more of a stream today than a river, but back in the day, it was a very important water source for this entire area. This entire area being the heart of ancient Sherwood Forest. So it's a precious place. There's more to it than meets the eye of that. I'm absolutely 100% certain. It wasn't built. It's a natural feature. It's exceedingly high for this area. And it was planted around 1850. But why? What for? What's the significance of this place? I'm not going to go on, don't worry. <laughs> I found two reports of this place. One dated 1954, and both of them, very, very interestingly, without any justification or reference, started out by mentioning Druids. Why? I mean, to me, it makes perfect sense for its location near this water source for its significance to even the Roman, the Roman invasion and how they used this place. It was buried deep in the heart of Shield Forest of ancient times. One of those two reports, the 1954 report, its opening line read something like, Druids were in Sherwood a long time before Robin Hood. Of course, my, my eyes just go straight to that. I'm, I'm wanting to know more <laughs> instantly. So today, it's a chilled out day, a regular vlog. I'm just gonna have a wander around this epic place. I'm gonna keep going until I either lose light or get wet. And if I can, I'll get the drone up and we'll see if we can get a sensible aerial view of the site I'm talking about. Hopefully we can. So I've got my work cut out today and a fair walk and it's all uphill. <laughs> I'm gonna move and I'll catch you in a little bit. If I find, excuse me, if I find any compositions, I'll bring you back, talk you through what my thoughts are. And if not, next time you see me, I'll be up on the hill thinking about throwing a drone in the air. So I'll see you in a little while. That was rushed, wasn't it? Bye <laughs> for now. Over there. Thank you. 
so nerve wracking. In fairness, it's quite windy today. I've come out to an open area, as you can see, and I hoped to be able to get up to about 400 foot and make my way across to the centre of the circle and then pan out. But I got up to about 250 foot and uh, wind warnings were, it was telling me to uh, lose some altitude. And at 200 foot, I risk running into some of the trees over there because it does go up on a gradient. Anyway, what I think I've captured, and you'll know now better than I will, is at least a rough idea of the scale of this place and some of the elevation. Can't really do that justice, but at least you can see the dome that I'm talking about, this hill, and some of the perimeter and how it connects to that plot of reclamation land, old colliery land that's now all sand. I'm so excited to go over there and have a look. I must do it, I must get over there. The sun's just coming out and these trees are looking astounding. So today now, I'm gonna get some shots taken. When I find a composition, I'll bring you back. I've got a bit of a shoot fest on. <laughs> sun's right there, right in front of us. But what it's doing is, it's putting this beautiful backlight on these leaves. And then here we've got a few more. And there's a whole sea of them over here. Anyway, I've got a little composition. I'm just sharing this because originally I was stood here and I was looking at this silver birch and I just like, I just like how he's exposed on that side and tight in against this oak on the right. He sits to the front prominently and then in the background there's just a couple of fellow silver birch, all in a nice dense green. But the difficulty is this, this guy is too much of a, I need to plug it somehow. And I need to drop my frame so that, you know, I can just, I need to move forward or I need to move back or I need to twist around a bit. And what I've done is I've moved over here. You see how windy it is. And what's happened is I've not sacrificed any light because the light is still bouncing off his face. I still have this exposed forest and the, the silver birch in the background and now to his right rather than on his left. The light is just kissing the trees there in the background. I'm hoping I can do something with this in post-processing. Dumb the shadows a little, pop the highlights a little, and then shadow this oak tree on the right. So we get a nice balance of light and contrast. The sky is, is high, it's, it's up here, and I can probably reduce my frame down to about that point, crop the bottom, and compose something out of that. On camera, I've gone into a portrait orientation. These highlights in the background, as I've dropped, uh, I've gone, I've taken a few shots and I've taken them at different apertures just to uh, affect shutter speed so that I can try and reduce some of the motion from this wind. And I've, at the moment, got it set at 1 1 25th of a second at f4. That's 0.3 of a stop under at ISO 100. I'm not really blowing any highlights out, maybe just a fraction probably in this top left hand corner somewhere, but it's, it's so minor. Um, and I'm focused in on the center of the, the silver birch trunk there on the left. Hopefully, sorry, direct sun, such an amateur. Hopefully that makes a nice shot, quite motivated by that. The couple of shots I've taken here, a uh, bit arty farty and may or may not work. So I'm not, I'm not really worried about them. I'm just happy to be shooting, to be perfectly honest. It's just ace. And I've got so much to explore yet. So I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move myself and I'm gonna find some other subject somewhere else. And I'll bring you back when I get there, wherever that may be. I'll see you in a bit. I've, I've come into the trees a little way and I'm at one of those places where the light still gets in. It's not completely shaded. There's still gaps behind me that are allowing the light in. <coughs> and I've come across a bit of a challenging shot. I really like this little silver birch. It 
these kind of isolated and bare of limbs and stands in a beautiful sea of green. But the challenge is this shadow, uh, sorry, this highlight here and here because the canopy's open, that light's reaching this oak. Beautiful as it is, it's detracting from my silver birch. How do we overcome it? How would you shoot this if you were still determined to get a shot of the silver birch? So what I've done is decided to go for a square crop or slightly, maybe a four by five, I'll see. So what I've done is placed the silver birch centre of frame. I've adjusted the, the height so that I've taken out the sky and I've probably got a little bit too much of the, the, the heather there. So what I'll do is I'll just trim that slightly in post. And the, the goal is to knock out the left hand side and knock out this tree on the right. So I just end up with that center pane for the, the silver birch. I captured better light than this. It's kind of got a little bit brighter and that silver birch isn't getting as much light. The contrast changes so frequently, but that's what's in my mind. That's, that's how I'm thinking to capture it. It's the only way I can capture it. And really, to be honest, I could do with a higher megapixel camera. I've never said that before. 24 point whatever megapixels is always more than enough but because it will be such a heavy crop having more megapixels will mean I'll be able to extract a larger image from it and that's the, that's the benefit of pixels is you can crop heavily <coughs> and I do not mind cropping at all it's just a tool in our toolbox time immemorial time immemorial time immemorial for a long time since photography began, some of the best photographers ever known have cropped very, very heavily. And I don't have a problem with it. I know some people do, but no, absolutely not. Beautiful tree, isn't it? Beautiful, beautiful tree. A beautiful blue sky, look at this. Epic. Right. So that's this one. I shot it most recently, 400th of a second at f1.8, focused in on the silver birch, obviously. Um, that's at exposure, I think I was down 0.3 of a stop, ISO 100. Thank you. Just the center. We'll see, let's go find something else. Look at that backlight. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Just amazing. Pockets of yellow and brown and red and orange. And... Spoilt for choice today. Absolutely spoilt rotten. And uh, loving it. Just loving it. But, oh no, it's clean. Just a bit of a reflection on the lens there. Sorry about that. Um, I found one last tree and I can't share the composition with you because it's been complicated. Um, I've, I've taken a couple of panos. This is my subject. How epic is that? And obviously the difficulty is the dynamic range between these highlights and this shadow. So it's just not, this, this, the GoPro, believe it or not, does a better job than I'm doing on the Sony. But to capture the color in the canopy and then the yellow and then the paler green and then the darker green, that would be the dream. So what I've done is I've taken a pano, four shot vertical, and then I've taken a four shot portrait horizontal. And I would dearly love to grab that canopy with this kind of background and not a lot of sky. It's, uh, it's beautiful. 
So I'm going to work on this for another 10 or 15 minutes, see what happens with the sun. It's a little bit hazy up there, but you can see how bright it is in these highlights. So I'm just going to mooch about. I'm just going to mooch about very, very slowly, take a long walk out of here, some random path, see what I can spot. And I might grab one or two more. As usual, whatever I pick up from today, anything of any value, I'll process them and pop a gallery up at the end. And that end is round about now. So I'm going to call this a wrap. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on Thursday for another episode of uh, Photography Concepts, hopefully. If not this Thursday, the Thursday after. And uh, I'll grab you on the next one. So, till then. Thanks very much for watching. Please take care of one another. And as ever, if you can't be good, just be careful. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now. I can't get into too much detail because I don't want to mislead anyone. All I can say is there's more than one reference, old reference, to Druids. This being a place of worship and sacrifice.